Le Mans is just a mythical place for me. The most amazing, daunting track in the world. It's great that Le Mans Cup gets to come here as a series. There's just so much history here. Le Mans is the most iconic track and I can't wait to try and go on the podium. For me it was one of the biggest races in the world. I'm allowed to drive this amazing event here. This track is uh, totally crazy, but uh, very enjoyable and so much more than I thought. It's a real track where you want to race. Incredible history, very special atmosphere, just an amazing place to be in, an amazing event to be part of. to my ears and I'm sure it is yours too. We're here at the legendary Circuit de la Sarthe for Road to the Mont. We have 45 cars on the grid ready to battle it out for what's set to be the highlight of the season of Michelin Le Mans Cup. Road to Le Mans is the blue ribbon event of the Michelin Le Mans Cup season with two 55 minute races played out on this unique circuit. As well as the prestige, most of the teams come with a view to battling for the title. In LMP3, Nielsen is surrounded by United Autosports. Rinaldi Racing and Cool Racing just behind them. We have a lot of crossovers from the ELMS uh, and from elsewhere, so it's a very tough field. Uh, no matter if it's a, the pro field or the, or the amateur field, it's going to be a tough event. And you know there's going to be lots of full course yellows, lots of slow zones. It's hard to build up a rhythm on a track that's over eight miles long. I'm hopeful and optimistic, <laughs> as much as I can be. In the GC3 title race, the number eight car from Iron Lynx boasts a 16 point advantage over the number two from Porsche Centrum over a Zurich eight by TFT. To race in Le Mans is always an, uh, an incredible feeling. As we all know, and for a, for a race car driver, it's, it's the pinnacle, uh, no doubt about it. Is it the highlight of the season? No, for me the highlight of the season will be when I have won the championship, <laughs> if at all, if I'm lucky enough. Every point counts, no doubt about that. This is a tough uh, challenge. Eighteen of the Road to Le Mans machines aren't Michelin Le Mans Cup full-season entries. Some of them have come a very long way, drawn to the prestigious Circuit de la Sarthe. It's been my dream since I was very young. Uh, I was born in Colombia, did a bit of karting uh, back in the day, uh, started to, to in GT3 in, in Australia, and slowly realized that, that, in my view, prototype racing is, is, is the future. So with my pro uh, driver and coach, Garnet, we, we started the project. This is my first official uh, international race. Um, great feeling. Uh, it's my first time in a Duquesne, actually. Really happy about it. The cliche, in my case, exists, is if you really fight for your dreams, you, you achieve them. Ahmad Alhati is the first driver from Amman to have ever competed at Le Mans. He's back in road to Le Mans, paving the way for the next generation of Amani drivers. I'm really proud to say that uh, I'm not the first and only. We have uh, young drivers coming through uh, into endurance as well. It's more important for me than anything else. Le Mans has been kind to me uh, in 2017, winning both the races. One of the biggest highlights of my career, for sure. Whenever we we're able to come here, uh, the memories of this place is just, uh, it's the biggest motorsport event uh, worldwide. So being in a support race is very, very important to me and I'm excited.
The Michelin Le Mans Cup may have originated as a Pro-Am championship aimed at gentlemen drivers, but increasingly youngsters are arriving to learn the ropes, aiming for a sports car racing career. And these youngsters are keen to prove their mettle on this testing stage. It's amazing. Uh, I love the switch over from single seaters to sports cars. Uh, it really suits my driving style and I'm getting along really well with it. The pace has been good so far this year. Le Mans, it's a great circuit, very historic, uh, one of the biggest races of the year. So uh, a good result in both of the races will really do me good for my career. Uh, it's a great platform uh, with all the big teams from WEC. I never thought I'd be here this soon in my career. It was just amazing to drive. In his first endurance racing season, Adam Atiki, the winner of the 2018 French Carrera Cup scholarship, has been charmed by the Michelin Le Mans Cup. Single seater and the endurance racing world are so different. In sports cars and GTs, doors are open to become a professional. I've got to perform well during my stints and in qualifying this weekend, as I'll be behind the wheel for at least one of those sessions. I've just got to do my best and see if I can make it pay off. After two seasons of British Formula 3, Argentinian Nicolas Veroni is building himself up to race for the very first time at Le Mans. It's crazy. I was today in the car just before going out and I had like butterflies in the stomach because such a crazy, iconic track. The history, I mean, driving 300 kilometers per hour down the, down the road is crazy. So yeah, it's, for me it's amazing. I have to say that I'm really happy and I found another type of racing that is that they enjoy more, so it's really cool. Finally, the time had come. Race one on Thursday evening. 45 cars are ready to do battle. At the head of the LMP3 field, Duquesne's Jean Gloria and our GT3 pole sitter, Nicky Leutweiler for Porsche Centrum Obra Zurich A by TFT. Twenty twenty one at Road to the Mall race one is underway. They get the green flag at the line. Jean Glory on pole position, but fellow front row starter Hugo de Vilda in the white and blue Mulna Motorsport car challenging as they stream in the late afternoon sunshine up to the Dunlop chicane. Lock up from Gloria, and there is a new race leader. Hugo de Vilda ahead of Jean Gloria. Mulna Motorsport from DKR Engineering. Battle under breaking, Maurice Smith dive bombed by teammate Antoine Decoin. That's a change for eighth. Frenchman already up 10 spots. Oh, trouble for Revere Lifestyle's Simon Escalier. A Frenchman in all sorts of woes at the Porsche curves. Oh, massive lock up. RLR M Sports' Mike Benham. Looks like right rear went down. GC3 leader Charles Wertz for Team WRT in the Audi. Oh, that's a big one for Japanese driver Ken Abe. The Ferrari's Rex has been contact with the Mercedes of Charles-Henri Samani. And that brings out the safety car. Oh, big moment for Black Falcons doing our munding. Goodness me. On board with Rory Pentonen. Whoa! Big trouble in front. Stephen Thomas gets Nicholas Leutweiler. Pole sitter in the pits. Pit stops are underway. Safety car is out. Tony Wells from Nielsen comes in. Maurice Smith and everybody else. Roy Penson hands over the Ferrari to Logan Sargent. And the pit lane empties. Lights off on the safety car. Here we go. We're going green. Hugo de Vilda comes in late. So does Jean Gloria. They've mistimed it. De Vilda is furious. Colin Noble leads for Nielsen. Josh Skelton second for Cool Racing. Nicholas Veroni third for Rinaldi. Nicholas Creighton for Cool in fourth. Matt Bell and Josh Skelton at it. That's for third place. And through goes 69. 
TT3 lead battle. Logan Sargent, the Iron Lynx Ferrari, closing on Ahmed Al Harty. Al Harty makes a mistake in the Oman Racing Aston, and there's a lead change. All trouble, Torsten Kratz, a spinner, and he's collected Guy Smith and the United Autosports car. They are both out on the spot. Final lap for Colin Noble in the slow zone. He wins Road to Le Mans race one. There's his teammate, Tony Wells. Victory for Nielsen and Logan Sargent. Championship winners, Iron Lynx win at Le Mans in GT3. It's the first ever race win at Le Mans for Nielsen. No wonder they are thrilled. And cool racing with two cars in the top five. Colin Noble, Tony Wells are victors in race one from Rinaldi and Cool Racing United just off the podium. And in GT3, 19th place overall for the number eight Iron Lynx car, the winner ahead of Oman Racing and Iron Lynx number nine. Rinaldi Racing and Cool Racing join Nielsen on the podium. A moment to savour for Colin Noble and Tony Wells. It's fantastic, isn't it? I mean, we won at Le Mans and that, that podium is so cool. When we came in, we realised that um, we had a great uh, pit stop. We made exactly the right time and Cole came out de facto in the lead. It was uh, totally nerve-wracking for the last half an hour. I was very relieved when he crossed the line. <laughs> On the GT3 podium, Oman Racing in second, separate the Iron Lynx number eight and number nine cars. It was a war zone out there. I was just trying to stay out of trouble and I managed to do that. And uh, I'm really happy I have been dreaming on doing Le Mans since I was a small kid. And uh, now winning here in the Road to Le Mans race is just wonderful, unbelievable. As the cars prepare to leave the collecting area, they'll be headed by Moritz Krantz from Molna Motorsport, our LMP3 leader, and the GT3 pole sitter, Rory Pentanen in the Iron Lynx Ferrari. One taste of Le Mans is not enough for the Michelin Le Mans Cup. Saturday morning, less than four hours before the start of the world's greatest endurance motor race, they head back out on circuit once more to play on the biggest stage in the sports car racing calendar. We go green for Road to Le Mans. Paul Man Morris Krantz heads 44 cars into the Dunlop curve. Inside DKS Jean Gloria looking to take the lead. He lost it from Pole in race one. He can't take it in race two. A big lock up behind from the second row car, but they all just about make it through. Nobody facing the wrong way. That's remarkable, two races in a row. Maurice Krantz leads them down into the S's ahead of Jean Gloria, the black and yellow car, big lockup from Antoine de Croix, ahead of teammate Mathieu de Babois in the two cool racing entries. 
The leader's starting to break away and De Croix losing ground. Oh, very big moment for him. He's lost five or six spots. Down to the second chicane. Everybody keeping their noses clean. No contact behind. A spinner, Maurice Smith and Eric Dodonka. Dodonka in the barriers, the Motorsport 98 car. Anton De Croix with a big lockup. He looks like he's got a puncture. Into the pits, Anton De Croix. And that is effectively the end of their race. Absolutely the end of the race for the Motorsport 98 car. It will go no further. Pole sitter Rory Pentanen for Iron Lynx. Won the race with Logan Sargent on Thursday, leading in GT3 here on Saturday. Oh my goodness, stay off the grass, Tony Wells, the race one winner. Wow, that's a massive moment. Battle for fourth place in LMP3. This is Guy Smith chasing Mathieu de Barbois. Huge moment! De Barbois almost in the barriers. How do they survive those? These cars are not made for rallycross. Tony Wells in the pits for Nielsen. Looks like that rally crossing has cost them. Race one winners in strife. At the chicane, battle for fourth place. Jean-Denis Delatraz in the Team WRT Audi, ahead of Gino Forgione in the AF Corsa Ferrari. Oh, that's trouble for DKR, their number one car, Marcello Marteotto. This race is keeping the marshals busy. More drama here on the run down to Terre Rouge. Gino Forgione and Pietro Peccinini. Forgione in the barriers. Slow zone. Marcello Maratiotto still stuck in the gravel. Now he's rescued and back on terra firma. Morris Kranz, the race leader, in the pits. Going through to take the lead, Torsten Kratz, W2M powered by Phoenix. But the driver change here, Hugo de Vilda takes over what was the leading car. There is our leader, but it still needs to stop. Cool Racing's number 19 in second. So six laps of the potential 13 completed by the race leaders. A mid-race pit stop then for Mulder Motorsport. Can they make it two out of two? RLR M Sport, both their cars in the pits. Number 11 is in. Torsten Kratz hands over to Leonard Weiss. So can they grab a podium? Ugo de Vilde back into the race lead now as he comes across the stripe, the number 11 car in the pits, and he pops back to the top of the pile. Fantastic work by the Mulner drivers. They are going to have a vast lead at the head of LMP3. Close in GT3, this is your top three. Mike Dynan for Oman Racing, the American driver ahead of Logan Sargent, his compatriot, and their Iron Lynx Ferrari, and Julian Andlauer, Porsche Ace, in the Porsche Centrum over Zurich Zay by TFT 911. LMP3 cars providing an opportunity here for the battle. The Aston Martin leading. The Ferrari in second tucks in behind the P3 cars. He's going to try and slip down the inside. Lots of debris on track. Oman Racing's Michael Dynan in trouble here in too deep. He spins out of the lead of GT3. Now, can he get the car fired up? Here is our GT3 battle. Julian Andlauer piling on the pressure. Halfway through this second stint, Logan Sargent still out front for Iron Lynx, looking to make it two wins here at Le Mans. The Iron Dames finished in third in race one. It was a big day for Iron Lynx. Second place battle. This is Nick Croyton for Cool Racing on Leonard Weiss, the WTM powered by Phoenix number 11 machine that led during the pit stops. Squeezing down the inside, Niklas Croyton just gets through for second place. Hugo de Vilda still leading for Mulder Motorsport. Oh, and again, another car on the grass. That's James Maguire's United Autosports. Avoids a big contact. Lighting up the timing screens. Garrett Grish flies by Team Virage teammate Sasha Lehman as they sweep into the Porsche curbs. The Canadian in the 71 car is absolutely flying now. How high up the order will he get? 
Look at the gap now for Hugo de Vilda. Nearly 20 seconds over Niklas Kreuten. All the motorsport have everything going their way. There's Moritz Kratz who started the car watching with the team from the pit box. Battle for third in LMP3. Malte Jakobsen, RLRM Sport, coming up the order. Now he's all over the back of Leonard Weiss. This is for the podium Saturday morning at Le Mans. Debris in the track. He'll try and avoid it if he can. But it's more important to make the pass for third. He's going to be right on the ragged edge. Squeezes inside. He had track position and he used it well. Replay here at Indianapolis. Big lockup. And this is Nielsen Racing's number 27 car. Max Kobach can't get it stopped. He's got a puncture. And he is in the gravel and the barriers. Oh, big lose. Scott Andrews, United Autosports 22 car. United having a wretched weekend. Slow zone and the final lap for Mulder Motorsports' Hugo de Vilda. The gap, 13 and a half seconds. Niklas Kruyten is closing, but he will not catch. Fantastic moments here for Hugo de Vilda on his way to the checkered flag. Further back, Julian Andlauer in the Porsche goes by Logan Sargent in the Ferrari. That's the lead change in GT3. Again, using the LMP3 cars. Hugo de Vilda, save of the moment, winning at Le Mans. The chequered flag is out. It is victory for Mulder Motorsports, for Moritz Kratz, and for Hugo de Vilda. There's Moritz Kratz. Wow. GC3 battle still racing halfway back around the circuit. Logan Sargent in the Ferrari has led since he took the car over at the pit stops. He got jumped at the chicane by Julian Andlauer and the Porsche driver finally squeezing by the Americans' Ferrari. And he's not going to give this one back, is he? What a start to the day for Julian Andlauer. The Porsche driver will start on pole position in the 24-hour race in the GTE Am Porsche that he races. So he has got a busy day. In fact, he might have to miss the podium here to get to the team ready for the start of the 24 hours and to get a little bit of rest and maybe some lunch. Nevertheless, it will be victory here for the Porsche, for Julian Andlauer and for Nicky Leutweiler. Second on Thursday, victorious on Saturday, just ahead of the number eight Iron Lynx Ferrari. Ah, oh, there's Nicky Leutweiler. Look how happy he is. The Mulder Motorsport team claim the top step in LMP3. Their first Michelin Le Mans Cup win. What a place to do it. Both Team Virage cars in the top seven. Cool Racing and Narla M Sports on the podium. And in GT3, Porsche ahead of Ferrari. 72 WRT Audi completes the GT3 podium. The biggest field of the year, the biggest stage to play on, and Mulner Motorsports choose Saturday morning at Le Mans to claim their first Michelin Le Mans Cup victory. That is a big day for the team. It's really incredible. Uh, I can't believe it. You know, it was a, a dream since I'm a kid to win over here on this mythical podium. And yeah, we, we did a good race. No mistake. The pace was quite good as well. And uh, yeah, I'm so happy about it. Victory goes to Moritz Kratz and Hugo de Vilda of Milner. Nicholas Coyton and Mathieu de Barbois for Cool Racing in second. Mikey Benham and Malte Jakobsen for RLR M Sport completing the podium in third. Thursday's win for Nielsen's number seven crew means they have a nine point championship lead over Rinaldi. United Auto Sports have two cars still in the hunt. A podium at Le Mans is devoutly to be wished. A win is just unbelievable. For the Porsche Centrum over at Zurich Zay and for Nicky Leutweiler, Saturday morning at Le Mans will be a day to remember. An incredible feeling in the last uh, lap. It was uh, a, a getting together of P3s with uh, the battling pair of GT3s and uh, Julian just had the better uh, end of it and uh, that's why we won. Obviously we're very happy with this end to our road to Le Mans.
Nicky Lloyd Viola on the podium without Julian Adlau, who's rushed off to his 24 hour team. Rory Penton and Logan Sargent, the Thursday winners, take second. Charles Vertz and Jean Denis Delatraz finish the podium off for Team WRT with their Audi. The top two in the GT3 points table have a win and a second place apiece in Road to Le Mans, and so the points gap remains 25 in favour of the number eight Iron Lynx car. The next round of the Michelin Le Mans Cup will be on the 18th of September in Spa Francorchamps. The memories of Le Mans 2021 will still be strong, but there are championship titles to be won. We'll see you there.